The former vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the 2019 elections, Mr. Peter Obi, has compared Nigeria to a vehicle with a knocked engine insisting Nigerians should devote more of their energy towards fixing the engine of the car rather than seeking or concentrating their energy on who becomes the driver. He said, and I quote, Today, nobody recognizes academics, nor are they invited for meetings on how to deepen knowledge in the country. Yet, every day we hear of meetings with kidnappers and bandits. Well, joining us to discuss this is uh, the founder of Kaduna Youth Community Development, volunteers, Zilani Adamo Musa. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. All right, so straight straight to the point. He's comparing our country to a sports car. A car that the engine is not as, as good as, I mean, bad. You cannot use it, except you change the engine, and that mm -hmm. means the car becomes brand new. Um, but from Peter Obi's perspective, what do you think the major problem of Nigeria is? Uh, from Peter's OBE perspective, I feel the major issue of Nigeria is uh, leadership. We are lacking good leadership. And uh, I followed up on the news and he was actually saying, instead of we Nigerians should concentrate on fixing the engine, but we rather, everyone wants to be the driver. Everyone wants to be the driver. Everyone wants to lead. And those in power, they don't actually want to set a path for young people to actually come and lead as well. Is, is the problem young people leading, old people leading, or is it just the fact that we have misplaced priorities as a country? I'll tell you what, there have been issues of, I mean, you live in this country, we have issues of ethnicity, we're being divided along those lines of ethnicity and religion. And before we address any issues socially or economically, I mean, look at what happened two days ago when the people from the north, the farmers and the, um, the food stock sellers were saying they're blocking all their food from coming to the south. It's always along those lines. We see things through the prism of religion and ethnicity. So could that not be the problem instead of saying that, oh, young people need to lead? But we have young people in the government. What have they done? During the NSAS protests, I don't think... Uh, be the young people trended towards that line because it's a problem faced by young people. So when you see them beginning religion, uh, tribe, tribal issue, I believe it has to do with sentiment. And uh, politics has always been, they've always used religion and uh, ethnic issues as an opium to actually divide the people. So I just believe that one thing we need to do is we need to come together, we as young people, because the leaders have they've actually failed us, and we need to find a way of how we can be able to take care of our problems. What happened recently about the issue of the, of the bringing the food from the north mm. to the south, I just believe it still has to do with interest. It has to do with interest. If it's a problem, there should be a dialogue between the southerners, the northerners, how can we be able to have well, solved these well, issues? Well, they have met with the federal government and they're giving them a one-month ultimatum that if something, if they're not paid the monies that they're asking for, of course, it's going to be status quo all over again. Is there dialogue at the top or dialogue at the bottom? Well, because, I'm not a member of that association. Because, so because I, I, just, I just believe when you want to solve a problem, you get to the root of it. You get to the root of it, not some selected people at the top making the whole decision for everyone, and you see that it's always a half problem solved. So one thing we believe is this issue of leadership is not about young people wanting to become leaders, but it's about the problems of the young people is not being addressed in any way. But the problem of young people in Nigeria is the problem of Nigerians in general. I mean, whatever the young people are, are feeling, of course, every other person in Nigeria is feeling it. They might not see it from the perspective of the young person, but I think Nigeria's problems are almost, the problem of the old person and the young person in Nigeria is almost the same thing. Just as the pensioner has to stay in the sun, stand in the rain, and sometimes die on the queue while trying to get their pensions paid, the young student is also having the same problem. The young person who's left to university is having the same problem. So my question again, I'm going to go back to it. I asked the question to one of my guests earlier on. We keep saying that we need to show governments that we need good governance. Every time we do that, 
they come down on us with the federal might, with all their energy. So how do we, what other ways can we explore to, to, to ask for good governance? Because this is a problem. You said leadership is our problem. How do we get good leadership? Please don't say you want young people in government again. I'm C not against citizen, it. Citizen, citizen engagement. Young people need to engage and hold their leaders accountable. Because once we hold our leaders accountable and we demand for transparent leadership, I think we'll have a way forward. And one of the ways we can do that is to actually participate. We need to engage in party politics. We need to see how we can be able to checkmate every decision being made. And we need to make sure that everything that has to do with the youth, because I'm a youth, anything that has to do with the youth, it needs to go to the youth. But why I'm actually saying, you made mention of pensioners right now. At least a pensioner has actually been in service for 35 years, and now he's asking of his pension. But a young person has not even yet been employed. There's no job, and if you look at what has been happening, the issue of insecurity, majority of these crimes, the perpetrators of these crimes are young people. And what do you think? An idle man, it's a devil's workshop. You don't have jobs, you graduate from school 10 years. Before you know what you studied in school, you can't even you can't even recall what you study in school. Before you know peer pressure, bad influence, you are doing what is not right. So we just believe we have a large number of youths and we need governments that can be able to create job opportunities for these youths. If they don't do that, I think we are heading towards the point of no return. And that's why I still believe in the statement uh, uh, Mr. Peter Obi made because we need to see how we can be able to fix the country and not witch hunt each other or at the expense of the youth, trying to see how they can be able to proffer solutions to move the country forward. Let's talk about the driver that he was talking about in, in his statement. The driver, obviously, is who leads the country. And we also know that every time it, it comes to leadership or who to choose, um, of course, the big wigs, the kingmakers, come to play. Um, and so, really, we don't really have a say. We only pick the man who a political party is fronting for us. And you made mention of the fact that people should join politics. Now, how many young people are interested in this conversation that we're having right now on TV? How many, I'm a young person, don't get me wrong, I'm not against the young people, but I'm just asking the questions that need to be asked. Um, how many young people are interested in these kind of conversations? Um, what conversations are they having on their platforms where they're on right now? Who wants to join a political party? Because half the time they tell you that, oh, you know, and this also is detailed for some other people who are not necessarily young, that politics is not for everybody. It's a dirty game. I mean, does everybody, I'm sure you belong to a political party. Please don't mention it. Um, but does that mean that you must run for an office? Is it not so that you can make a change or have a voice or a say? You don't actually need to run for an office because we have the primary and secondary election or kind of politics. So you can be in the politics, you can be in the system and see how you can be able to influence those that will be able to be elected into office. And also, we as young people, I think we are willing to take that bold step to see how we can be able to uh, get involved. And what actually scares the youth is, they'll tell you politics is dirty, politics is not for everyone, this and that, but we believe that the politics of Nigeria is expensive. It's too expensive. You're here a graduate, a talented one. You have a lot of innovations. You have a lot of experience in how you can solve issues in communities and how you can bring change. And now you don't have funds. You're just a graduate and you've been thinking of how you can be able to survive or set up a business. Then you've served the people, you've earned their trust and they are willing to push you forward. And before you know, it boils down to money. It boils down to godfatherism. It boils down to you need to belong to a particular group of people before you can even have the opportunity. You need to belong. Your dad needs to be someone or you need to know someone. So before you know, you're still going back to the same cycle. But that is, that is the makeup of Nigeria. Whether you are going to look for a job, you're trying to bid for a car, you have to, it's a man, no man world. So how do we or you, as young people, change that narrative. Again, you have said joining political parties, but does it stop there? Uh, it doesn't stop there. What we intend to do, or what we are doing actually, is uh, we are having 
like-minded youths because you just made mention of having new youths are not interested in such kind of discussion. It's not that they are not interested. Some people have lost interest along the line because you see that uh, just the recent uh, registration, the party registration they did, it was prioritized over the NIN registration. So we just believe that everybody is now wise, at least the youth now know uh, the ball game has, has, they've played the same game over and over again. So it's something that we are already used to and we believe that we are coming with a bold step to be like, okay, we have like minds and we are willing to take the front. Taking the front is not like we are bringing a young man that will come and aspire to become Nigerian president. We mean taking the front of good governance, decision making, and anything we see that the interest of the youth or the majority are not captured, we'll be able to send out a statement and we'll keep calling on the government's attention because from this entire protest, we feel, okay, the youth have a voice and we say thank God to the media and the social media as well so we can be able to speak and talk about issues bothering the youths over and over again. And what we will do is we will make sure we come together, we spell out our needs, on prior, we'll prioritize our needs and tell the government this is what we want or this is what our people want. So when they don't get it, they'll be able to know this is the area the problems is coming from. This is the leader that has failed you. So that come election is not business as usual that you come and buy people's vote, though it's still happening, <laughs> but it is not business as usual, I assure you. Come this local government election and come 2023 election, you're going to see a lot of changes. It's not business as usual because the leaders are I failed. would really want to fault you, but I'm running out of time because we just saw pictures from the Kanu local government elections where we had under eight children voting. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing every single year. And it makes people like me on this side who keep asking the questions wonder if we really want a change in this country. But then lastly, before I let you go, um, Governor Peter, we talked about, you know, the country not distinguishing um, politicians, thugs, and, you know, people who are political jobbers from the academia, that he, he, he in fact said that would rather have meetings with bandits, would rather prioritize, you know, dialoguing with those people instead of talking to researchers, to professionals who can also help us to pivot this country into the right direction. Why has the issue of um, professionalism and, you know, research dwindled in this country? Shall I say, personally, I believe uh, the problem, they don't want the problem solved. Because if I say they don't want the problem solved, is because you need to, you have issues, and these issues don't used to be there. So what do you need to do? You need to research what happened that these issues is now bothering everybody. From the north, is moving partly to the south, is moving partly to the east, and before you know, we'll not have a country. So we just believe it's a particular interest, hmm. which we are still looking at it from different angles, so that we are not going to now still divide the heads of the youth. Mm -hmm. So what we intend to do, we are not really going into that as young people, but rather we are trying to create a front, unite ourselves, because we believe if they should engage youth more in sporting activities, if youths are going to be employed, and if the interest of the youth is going to be captured and implemented in every policy the government does, I think even we, should, we are going to have insecurity. It won't be as this. Mm. But all you see is, okay, bandits here, and the government will end up paying, or the, end up, we end up, the government will end up compromising its mandate over that. When we have a lot of... I just saw the, uh, one of the governors well, saying uh, we should employ machineries to... Machineries, yes. So I don't think we have a lot of food soldiers. We send our food soldiers for peacekeeping in other countries. <laughs> That's I a conversation feel, for another day. I feel, but I feel... Uh, Zelani and Damu, thank you very much for speaking with us. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, I will give you my take. It's appalling that terrorism has, in the past few months, taken over our headlines, overshadowed everything else in the country. We've given it all kinds of names and treated it like it wasn't such a big deal. Now, our children are being snatched from schools and taken into the forest for ransom. Governments are silent, and their silence on this 
uh, bandit activities have been taken as weakness. The so-called repentant Boko Haram terrorist on whom millions of taxpayers' monies were spent on are unfortunately not as repentant as we were made to believe. They have become moles for their terrorist friends, tipping them and informing them of plans against their groups. Doesn't this make mean that you know we have failed in that area of fighting terrorism? Does this not show that our priorities are misplaced? We seem to make the same mistakes again and again, and I ask why? Why can't we for once get it right? Why can't we show some, uh, you know, that we can come down hard on these criminals? How many more have to die or be captured for the government to do right by Nigerians? Well, we're watching and we're waiting. I'm Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.